please welcome to the stage Senior Vice President and General Manager at Cisco, Dr. G. Rittenhouse. Thank you very much for uh, that welcome. This is actually my first time at Open Daylight, so uh, I, I really appreciate that. There's been a lot going on over the last several years in this community. And even though a lot of us know uh, what Open Daylight is, SDN, things like that, uh, I want to just take a few minutes to show you where we're going, to take a step back. Because I know that some of us in the audience are saying, is it real? How much do I commit? How would I use this? And so today, what I'm going to do is show you what Cisco is doing in this space and uh, how all the pieces uh, fit together for us. And in terms of this, uh, open daylight is one of the fundamental elements to our open source strategy. Our customers, our industry, is demanding that we want to have things built on open platforms where people, a community like you and us, can come together and build something special. I think Phil previously really nailed it when there's a delay Everything is driving us towards faster and faster services. And the network and the programmability of that network is one of the key enablers to this rapid acceleration that we expect. So from a Cisco perspective, open source and open daylight is a key essential element to our strategy. And we build that strategy around, obviously, SDN and NFV. And there's been some wonderful announcements over the last few months and even at this uh, summit this week around new products in this space. And that's fantastic. Uh, Cisco launched uh, our own uh, commercialized product in April. We'll GA it in just a few weeks. But instead of just focusing on a controller and, and sure making it robust and everything else, I'm going to show you how we incorporate that into our overall SDN and NFV uh, architecture that is very, again, open, transparent, and able to produce services very, very quickly. I'll introduce you just to show you the architecture of our product. I'm going to give you some use cases of how we use that in an end-to-end -end system. And then, of course, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all coders. And we want to be able to use this system and experiment and, and put new services and, and play with it ourselves. And I'll show you how to do that uh, at the end. So obviously, with all of the, the announcements and all of the work going on, we definitely feel that open daylight is real. I always hesitate to put up a slide like this, because by the time I do, there are even more partners and things that I forgot. But over 47 partners now with over 2 million lines of code uh, coming in. And you've already seen the announcements of products, HP, Ericsson, Brocade, Cisco, and whatnot. There is this momentum in the industry of not only taking this code and contributing to it, but making it very, very real in the marketplace. And I point these things out just for a sense of context, because in order to get to this kind of level of adoption in the industry, it took Linux about 10 years to get to this spot that we've been able to do in just a few. So that momentum uh, is real, and the adoption in the industry, and you'll hear others throughout the day showing how it's being used in the network, and how people are building on it. Very, very exciting. So as I said before, open daylight and open controllers are key to Cisco's NFV and SDN strategy. And I put up here our NFV architecture 
for the service provider space. There's a lot of things on this slide. What I want you to do, though, is focus on a few things. One is, we have not put in the APIs in this. It's not about focusing on what API or, or whatnot in this. Everything in this architecture is programmable. We have a declarative language. We use NetConf and Yang. Everything is built inside of these declarative languages, so you can just write a Yang model, auto-generate the code, and create some new services right away. And by the way, I encourage you to go downstairs and, and do that and, and, and jump on the code and start programming. The second thing that's very important about this is that we have separated out the devices from the services. So yes, on the bottom, we have an end-to-end -end view of the devices, from the CPE all the way to the data center. And that's what you would expect. And yes, there's a lot of third party, and yes, on and on and on it goes. And of course, because um, not everybody supports NetConf Yang, we have to support a lot of southbound interfaces. So I just highlight a few there, uh, the normal ones that you would expect. But the services are built independent of these devices. We build the services in this kind of orchestration policy kind of layer. And by separating out the services from the underlying devices, we're able to bring things to market extremely fast with zero dependency on the devices. It's a microservice architecture. We drop code very frequently. On the models, it's all agile. We're going DevOps, all of those things that you would expect. But in addition to that, by separating out the services from the devices through a controller layer and through an orchestration layer, we're able to bring these things into the market much, much faster and solve that delay problem that Phil uh, articulated just before. And this is one of the, the key things for us. We, of course, then uh, have to integrate into the OSS BSS system, but we see an opportunity there as well to add declarative languages and have much more of a self-service type portal, uh, 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 type business logic layer there instead of just a classic OSS. So this is a very, very big shift uh, inside the industry, and it's to address these specific customer concerns about faster, 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 with, of course, in both the service provider, enterprise, and data center customers, this, we still have very high requirements around uh, scalability and um, availability of the service. Last April, we announced the Cisco Open SDN Controller, what we call OSC. And we did a first customer ship uh, in April. It will be GA in um, just a few weeks. And some of the key features, the reason why we did this is because while our customers are very excited about the controller, they're playing with it, they're bringing it into their network, et cetera, they also require some support around this and, and some guarantee of quality, scalability, and whatnot. So what we've done is we've taken the code, downloaded it, surrounded it with some uh, high availability, check the scale, do all the hardening that you would expect, all the service uh, operations and deployment that you would need for it to really kind of tie a bow around it. And for those customers who don't want to download the code and use it directly, you can go through and, and pick this up. But more importantly is um, instead of just offering a controller that people can use, we include this in our systems. And I'm going to show you uh, uh, some of these architectures of what we do, but in our virtual managed services platform for service providers, ODL provides the uh, SDN layer 
uh, on top of our, our switch fabric. In, in the case of our WAN automation engine, where we start to add optimization logic there for QOS, for routing, et cetera, um, it's also built in open daylight. So we're taking this product and now incorporating it into more end-to-end -end services uh, and bringing together a more complete picture for our customers and for the industry. This is the architecture uh, that we've used. Um, we uh, have, you know, starting at the top, Deluxe as the interface. We build applications on top of it. Um, you can, again, go to DevNet and, and grab the code and put your applications on top of it. It's built on base network services uh, that we've also upstreamed into the code, so all the things around topology and uh, management and whatnot, that's included. Obviously, we can include third party. You can include third party. It's all open, and you can just start uh, uh, putting stuff in there. And then it's built on the MD-SAL uh, abstraction layer. And again, as I said before, everything that we do is being driven programmatically through a model abstraction. And uh, then supporting all of the uh, interfaces down to our switch fabric. So for us, it's much more than just a controller. It's much more than just an SDN kind of abstraction away from the data fabric but a platform where we build a lot of applications and where we put in a lot of basic fundamental network services that the rest of the community can, uh, can use and build upon. In this code, we are completely agile. Um, we drop code internally very, very frequently. But what we will do um, for the industry and for our customers is we drop code every two months. Every two months we drop code and, and that date is fixed. So it's a rhythm for us that is very, very important. And what we'll do is we'll scale back content to make the delivery dates. So if we don't get it in the, you know, if the backlog, we don't quite get through the entire burn chart, uh, we, we drop it off, drop code, and put that in the high priority for uh, the next couple sprints to go through. So every two months we drop code, and you can see some of the features. For the most part, what we try to do is obviously bug fix, HA, scalability. If there's a particular customer service that is important, We'll bring that in as well and then upstream to the community so that we can have this kind of engine going uh, and then, of course, synchronize this with the usual uh, open source drops as well. So we have now this synchronized uh, distribution between the open source uh, contributions and downstreaming as well as the commercial product. Now, I, I said before, um, that we use these in uh, overall services, not just as a controller. And I want to highlight one of our recent ones for a tier one operator. This is for an ultra low latency network. So in an ultra low uh, latency network, um, being able to route the packets uh, through the, the fabric very, very quickly is important. So we break it up into two tiers, a layer one, which has a port-to-port -port delay of about four nanoseconds, and a layer two that has a port-to-port -port delay of about 190 nanoseconds. And so being able to adjust how much traffic goes through the different layers, load balance this, is a very complicated problem. But it's a very popular problem in, in terms of service providers because you can start to attach to financial markets and other kind of market-bearing transactions. And so because of this, it's very dynamic. And if we were to build this type of application in the traditional way, it would have taken about a year. But instead, uh, and, and by the way, it, it would be because we have different switches here, um, it's a complicated problem because we then have to interact with all of the different CLIs being able to program these switches and whatnot. By doing it uh, with ODL and OSC, 
We were able to turn it around extremely quickly after the customer requested it, build it, and uh, deploy it. So again, while the controller as, as an entity is important to us uh, as part of the open source strategy and what our customers are going, bringing it into end-to-end -end, uh, solutions and products for us is equally important because that's really where the value gets created, where there's a customer need or an industry need. You're able to then respond very quickly to that need and then bring it into the network. Finally, being all software engineers here, we all want to code. And while I can talk about how fast things go and, and the models and things like that, the best way of actually participating in this is just to code yourself. We've shown that uh, Cisco is obviously very serious about this. Uh, we're very serious about the open source community and the contributions into that. We've also created a commercial product to make sure that our customers who really demand that kind of reliability can have access to it. But at the heart, at the basic DNA of this, is the user community to start coding stuff on top of it, creating those applications, and through that being able to have this virtuous cycle of people adopting the platform, creating new applications, which makes it more valuable, which means other people adopt it. And through this community, we can then accelerate that network transition through the tipping point of this adoption. So if you want to, uh, and I, I see some of you already have your laptops out, you can go to developer.cisco.com, go into the site OpenSDN, and this is the screen that you'll see. And you can get the videos of how to do it. There is a coffee maker example there that you can use and just start building on that as a template um, and start, start developing. This is really where we uh, uh, see the most excitement and where we really like to see the participation. There's a marketplace there, so you can put things in there when you're done and all of that. Very, very easy. Um, we have about 100,000, I think, uh, uh, people already in, in the DevNet community. So um, it's gaining a lot of traction and a uh, very, very popular place to be. So with that, I'll just conclude by saying um, open daylight is real. You've already seen a lot of the commercial announcements around this. We fully uh, support that and, and think it's a wonderful opportunity. But also, we like to see it included in real overall solutions. A naked controller uh, is only so valuable. So uh, explore, use it, try it out but also recognize the fact that it's going to be in a lot of the solutions that Cisco puts forward in the SDN and FV space. Enjoy it, use it, uh, have fun with it, but also code on it. Upstream code, contribute to the, pro to the program. That's how the platform gets stronger. That's how we as a community get stronger. And that's how we can transform this industry to reduce that delay and make sure that the network is uh, the contributing factor to the transformation and market uh, uh, acceleration that we're seeing in our industry. With that, thank you very much and have a great summit.